Okay. So this session is in about um, AI application layer two, and it continues the previous session, which was AI application layer one. So in the first session, we um, have gone over the AI technology enablers, what's machine learning, what's deep learning, and we covered some important details uh, of them. And also we talked about um, application areas like computer vision, and natural language processing, speech recognition, how uh, is the pipeline for each one is established, and what are the modules uh, inside each of these is each of these fields. Then we discussed the AI frameworks and what's called the training, model training, and model inference, and what's the difference between them. In today's session, we build uh, on that, and we here discuss what are the commercial uh, use cases available in computer vision, in NLB, and in robotics or robotics uh, brute, uh, robot process automation, and combined with NLB and computer vision. So this session or today's session is mainly about the commercial offers that we have uh, from our vendors and you can offer to your customers. The first one that I will start with is the commercial offers in computer vision. And in the last session, we talked about the main computer vision tasks that form the basics of advanced computer vision use cases. As a quick recap, they are the four basic or main uh, computer vision tasks that build up these use cases. The first one is image classification, and this is the machine's ability or the computer's ability to tell this is a photo of what, or this is a video of what, this is a video of flower, of an elephant, etc. And this is the basic computer vision task. Then comes one similar to it, which is object detection. And this is the computer's ability to not just capture the photo and tell this is a photo of what, but actually determine the location of the objects within. So it says that this is a car, for example, and it's in that location inside the image. And as you can see here, in object detection, you can detect multiple objects. So you cannot, for example, use classification here to tell that this is an image of a car because there are also pedestrians, there are buildings, street, etc. So object detection is more suitable here. The third one is face recognition. And since this is a computer's ability to know the identity of the person by giving the computer only the face or the picture of that person. And again, it should not or it must not be only a frontal face picture of the person, but it should be recognize them from multiple views or from multiple angles. The same as uh, humans can recognize their friends from multiple angles. The fourth and last one is both estimation. And this is the computer's ability to know the location of the key points on the human body and connecting those these key points the computer can tell what action is that human doing built on those four uh, computer vision basic tasks so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah i'm having one doubt so whether uh, the system can recognize like uh, where on the system can perform what we are doing as human yes yes it can locate those points connect them and then it can say if you are sitting or standing or running or falling on the on, uh, on, the, on the road for example so detecting uh, accidents etc okay 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 so these basic computer vision tasks when combined, they form uh, advanced computer vision use cases. And the platform that we have and we offer is called Insight AI, builds on top of these use cases or on top of these tasks. So the platform has ready commercial AI use cases. As we said, it is camera agnostic. It can uh, work with any camera. 
it just gets the feed from that camera, checks if it has the minimum resolution required, and it can process it. So we can work with Axis, with Higvision, with any camera already installed at the customer site. It can also integrate with the existing uh, video management systems, and it also has its own video management system that captures clips of incidents that require, as we will see in the in the use cases. So the first use case that we have is regarding threat detection. And here the objective is to do early detection of some threats. So for a bank, for example, if um, it wants to early detect if someone is trying to rob that bank, so if there is someone trying uh, on the street far away from the bank and this one holds a gun, uh, whether it's the fire gun or um, or a knife, any white weapon, it can the camera should uh, capture that and the AI system that's connected with that camera will analyze the photo or the video coming from that camera. And when someone like that appears in the stream or on the street, the system will automatically detect that he is holding a weapon or there is a threat and give an instant alarm to the security uh, guards in the bank or in the facility. Not only that, but if someone uh, leaves a bag somewhere and walk away from it, it could be also a threat. It could contain explosives or anything. So the system also captures that and alarms or notifies the respective persons. It can also detect if someone um, forms a threat that we said it could capture his face and capture a video clip of the incident. So if someone is walking with, with a weapon such like that, it captures a three or five seconds video that forms as a proof that was that this was an incident or that was a threat. And then you can search for that specific person using his face, his captured face, in all the database to know which one was that person or what is his name or his identity. The second use case is concerned with uh, security and it's for intrusion prevention. So in multiple facilities, we have uh, some places or some areas where no one should enter that place or specific people only are allowed to enter that place. For example, in, um, in a healthcare facility or in a hospital where you have a room that contains um, drug materials, for example, only specific staff are allowed to enter or in, uh, in a government area, there's a specific place where specific people only are allowed to enter. So this system takes the list of people who are allowed to enter that place. And there's a camera installed there and the system is connected. The AI system is connected in the back end with the camera. If someone tries to access this area, it first it checks that this one is actually a person and then it checks his face and tells if this one is the one who is allowed to enter or not. If he is allowed, it's okay. If he's not, it will generate an alert or notify the respective person and capture the intruder's face. It also gives the customer the ability to draw these areas. So as you can hear, see here, the customer using um, a, draw, um, a draw tool can paint which area should be a warning zone and which area should be an intrusion zone. This is also a policy manager where the customer can list uh, who are or who can access this area and in which time slots. So if you have one person on a time shift, for example, can access that and outside that time shift, he cannot access this area. He will be automatically detected and captured if he tries to access this place 
in a time slot that's not allowed for him to access. This is differs from the normal CCTV feature movement detection. In normal CCTV speed or movement detection feature, it will give an alarm once there is something moving. If there is a cat trying to cross the area here, it will give an alarm because there is no AI capability that can detect this is an actual human and checks for his face if he is allowed or not. The third use case is about border control and vehicle identification. And simply it's the machine's ability to detect the model of the car, the type of the car, the color of it, and recognize its owners or its uh, riders. The system also can uh, generate analysis on how many vehicles entered uh, through the gate or through that border. Uh, what was the most uh, busiest uh, day in the week and in the month, the number of cars, etc. Let's see a short video. Okay, the fourth use case is for remote monitoring, mainly in taxi uh, services or in carpooling. So in this use case, there is a camera inside the taxi or the car, and the use case is about monitoring and detecting if there is a problem that might happen inside that. So if you have uh, a driver and that driver is not focusing on the road or is uh, looks looks tired that could be a problem because a lot of accidents are happening because the drivers are driving while you are they are tired or sleepy so this camera sends the feed to the ai application or the ai system and it analyzes the feed and determines the status of that driver in addition to that it can detect if there is a problem with the customer between the customer and the driver and capture that and store that if this is required. The fifth use case is for uh, boards mainly. And this is for damage detection of containers. So what's happening in the boards? Uh, in the chip to chip uh, process is that the container gets first chipped or unloaded from the first chip, put to the ground, then someone uh, gets to that container, examines it manually, sees uh, some conditions in the container. It he first reads the data, then checks for the seal, for the door, and checks if there is any kind of damage on that container. After this process is finished, the container is loaded again to the next ship to be shipped to the new country. Using AI and computer vision, this process can be automated. So instead of unloading the container to the ground and having someone to check for that, you can unload the container from the first ship. And while you are moving it to the second ship, an AI system connected to a camera can capture that container 
and read all this information. So it reads the number, checks for the conditions that the person should check for, and determine the damage of any kind on that container. So it reduces the time of operation and automates the process. It can be also connected to the existing, uh, the existing system in the bot to automatically put the information extracted from that container into the system. And this is actually implemented in DB world. The sixth use case is for cloud management, and this is based on uh, drones technology or unmanned aerial vehicles. So in this use case, there is a drone, and on that drone, there is a camera that captures uh, the area that should be monitored. The camera then uh, is connected with an AI system, and the system can analyze what's happening or what's going on. So if there is um, an unsafe uh, movement happening or a catastrophe that might occur, it alarms or notifies the respective persons to move and act accordingly. So it gives you full visibility about what's happening and it detects if something uh, not normal will happen soon based on the people movement. This is a use case that happened in Saudi mainly for Hajj. Let's see how it works. So this is a drone flying over the place with the camera. And down here are the analysis that's coming from the system. So in this Hajj, um, there are millions of people coming to that area, doing tawaf, and multiple disasters could happen because of um, the overcrowdedness. So having such a visibility and the prediction of what will happen or what would happen is critical. Okay, moving next, the seventh use case is about infrastructure inspection. And it works in the same way as the previous one, using a drone that has a camera and connected to the system. You can capture or inspect remote infrastructure without sending someone there. So if you want to inspect uh, something remote like oil and gas uh, pipes in the um, in the sea, for example, or wind turbines or um, bridges, for example, every remote infrastructure that's hard to inspect frequently, you can use drones and AI to do that process. So this is a video with a, where a drone is trying to uh, inspect that facility. On the left is the real-time uh, camera feed, and on the right is the output. So the system detects that this is a corrosion, displays it visually here, and generates a report with that information about the location of the damage, in which facility, and all the other information. Moving next is the use case uh, for construction or mainly for BBE compliance. So having a camera in a construction field, for example, and the objective here is to detect if the workers are compliant with BBE guidelines or not. So when an accident happens, you don't know what was the reason for that. Or you can even take uh, precautive measures to prevent such actions. 
So there is a camera monitoring the construction field and the system analyzes that uh, stream from the camera and detects if the employees are compliant or not. They are wearing card hat, uh, gloves maybe, if they should wear gloves, and who is compliant and who is not. So the employer can uh, make something rewarding for the people who are compliant or know who is not compliant and give them some, some training or is, is their awareness, etc. So no IoT devices are involved here. Nothing is installed inside the helmets. Only an, a camera connected to the system and that's it. Okay, the ninth one was developed last year for COVID-19. And it contains something very similar to the previous ones. So the first thing uh, in this use case is the thermal imaging using a thermal camera. It can uh, measure the temperature of the person from a distance. And it can concentrate the measurement on the face, not the full body, and on the face, on the forehead uh, only, so you get an accurate measurement. Besides that, it can also detect if your employees or your customers are compliant with mask wearing or not. So if someone is not wearing a mask, you will know and you will notify him or alarm him. And it also ch checks for the social distance between the people. This is a demo that I wanted to show you. A basic one that demonstrates all of this. So it's now telling that there is a person in the, in the screen and now the system is enabled. Oh, sorry. Now the system is enabled and it's recognizing him, his name, and now he's wearing a mask and his temperature. Someone will enter. The box is turned red because they have crossed the safe distance. And again, it recognizes here even with wearing the mask. In addition to that, as you can hear, see here, his feelings is captured from his face expressions. Now, all the use cases explained till now are offered in one platform, as we said. And these uh, are organized in the microservice architecture, meaning that you can combine or generate a new use case by combining all the features and the services explained so far from that tree that you can see. Here. And again, it all works with only having a server that holds the system or the, the program on it, and the server is connected to the cameras or the NVCR. This system generates the analysis or the reports and can send them to um, a mobile app or uh, to a central uh, management device or any central system. There is two options to deploy these use cases. The first one is on prem and the second one is on cloud. So if he, the customer wants to have these use cases on prem, these are uh, example um, server specs that are needed and they differ according to the use case. But this is an example or a sample um, requirement for the COVID-19 use case, so you know uh, or have an idea about the requirements of that platform. So the first one and the most important thing that the server should have a GPU. The type of the GPU and the number of GPUs required will be uh, will depend on the number of cameras that the customer have and the use cases he requires. <coughs> but overall, or the basic requirement is that there should be a GPU in the server. The operating system is Linux, mainly Ubuntu <coughs> and Red Hat. So it's not working on Windows servers. 
and it's not uh, a memory intensive uh, application or use case. So an eight gigabyte memory. Yeah, I am, yeah, yeah, I'm having one doubt. So in this case, uh, the in NVIDIA P40 enroll is not recommended. NVIDIA what? B40? Yeah, NVIDIA. Yeah, yeah, P40, P2000, like other models are not supported, only this, only no, Tesla and RTX. Actually, actually, all the models can work, and for specific use cases, specific models are recommended. So, for oh, example, yeah. as you can see here, Tesla V100 can support up to 24 cameras as the customer side. If the customer has more cameras than that, then um, Tesla A100 could be uh, a more suitable one. So the model of the GPU, we actually determine it with the customer depending on the cameras and what he wants to do, what use case he wants. Okay. 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 So this was for the on-prem um, deployment option. And for the cloud option, you don't need actually anything except that a good connectivity to send the streams to the cloud and then get uh, the results or the analysis. Um, and to send the these streams to the cloud, you should have uh, a machine that sends these streams. This machine could be a simple laptop, a regular one, or can be something simpler, such as um, a Raspberry Pi. It, it should only could, uh, it should only be able to run Python uh, codes that will relay those streams to the endpoints on the cloud, and that's it. So, um, if you have any question regarding the previous, let me know before we move to the NLB and RBA use cases. Yeah, the, in this, uh, okay, which cloud platform is supported like uh, Azure or AWS or both will support? Yes, both are supported. And if it's a service provider and wants to have this on his cloud, it's also it's also available. So it's supported oh. for private and public clouds. Okay. 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 So if there are no more questions, I will move to the app. Thanks, Abrahman. Um, hello, Shankar. This is uh, Dara Yassin. Uh, I'm also an AI solution architect at Ingram Micro. Okay, and I will uh, walk you through the RPA and NLP parts. I will start sharing my screen. So please confirm when you can see it, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, can you see the screen? Uh, still not, I think uh, it will take some one or two mm -hmm. minutes. Let's check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can able to see that. Okay, great. So assuming you already are uh, familiar with um, the different sessions you, we gave, also regarding the different AI subfields, how they uh, work together and how they serve each other to provide with, uh, to provide us with complete end-to-end -end, um, use cases. Today I will talk about um, RPA or um, robotic process automation. Okay, so we will understand what is RPA and how RPA interacts with artificial intelligence and how they help us to provide our customers with, you know, more uh, digital transformation solutions. Okay, so I will start with the definition of RPA and the characteristics of any RPA solutions, and then we will take things step by step. Starting with the definition, RPA stands for Robotic Process Automation, which is the technology that enables the computer software to emulate and interact, integrate actions that are typically performed by the humans to and give them the ability to interact with the different digital systems. Okay, 
Usually, the software that executes these operations are called robots. The RPA robots gives us um, the ability to automatically capture the data, run the different applications, trigger the responses, and act accordingly and communicate with other systems as well. Okay, as we can see, uh, the characteristics of any RPA solution is that, of course, the, the, um, the RPA mimic the human actions and it can operate in, on any kind of application and there is almost no mistakes and require no risk time. Okay, and the target processes for RPA solutions are usually highly manual, repetitive, role-based uh, processes that have almost um, no exception rate or very exception rate. Okay, and we will, um, you know, we will uh, discuss more of the characteristics and how RPA moved from this very role-based um, uh, role-based processes to more of cognitive uh, processes in the next slides. Okay, so why we always see... Yeah, all yeah. Yeah, I am having on doubt. So uh, it can be any uh, difference, maybe that uh, while using the RPA from the traditional IT solution, is there any difference between them? What do you mean by traditional IT solutions? Um, traditional, like uh, what now? <clears throat> what now offering? Uh, like like what I am doing with my customer? Mm -hmm. Like RPA, how it plays? Uh, like to the customer, like uh, mm -hmm. in, yeah. in, in the absence of the human. Yeah, yeah, I understand your point. So RPA part comes to replace a um, huge part of the rule-based and manual steps done by, done by the human. So for example, if we are talking about um, in the HR area, we are talking about uh, candidate selection, okay? So first you need, for example, if we have an HR specialist or recruiter, he needs to go through all the CVs or the resumes himself, check for specific um, keywords, for example, a check for a specific number of years of experience and then choose the right uh, candidates for this position and then start scheduling the interviews with them, choose the right time and all of this. Okay, so RPA now can do most of this process on behalf of the employer, uh, the employee. So the employee can focus more on the decision making part and more of uh, more on the business part instead of, you know, uh, um, information from the CVs. Um, another example in um, the, for example, generating quotation for a specific product. So the usual process includes that you receive the request from um, your uh, customer or your partner, then you go check the price for this, generate the quotation file, send the quotation to the customer back, okay? RPA now can do also most of this process on behalf of the employee. Okay, so this is here comes the RPA part. It integrates with the current IT infrastructure, okay, to help um, reduce the required manual uh, intervention done by the human. Of course, the human part will still be there. We are not totally replacing humans. We are just helping humans to focus more on the decision making and the business values. Does this make things more clear for you? Yes, yes, it's clear, yeah. Okay, okay, great. So usually we say that RPA is a good starting point for digital transformation because um, as I was mentioning, RPA can integrate to any um, current IT infrastructure. You don't need to do a very um, huge changes or deep integration with uh, the system. It can uh, work with most of uh, the enterprise systems currently. Also, another uh, important factor here is that RPA is easy to scale. So according to uh, the business requirements and the scaling of uh, the enterprise or uh, the company, we can add uh, more uh, tasks to be uh, done by uh, the RPA system and include further more uh, processes to uh, serve wide range, uh, a wider range of uh, functionalities or requirements and also can scale to include other uh, departments um, moving forward. 
Okay, and another thing here is that RPE is future proof as it can work with the current IT technology and it can work with any future um, future IT technology because you can integrate the RPE with any um, software, enterprise systems, IT infrastructure and so on. On the level of uh, the customer value drivers, what are the key benefits of using um, RPA uh, in the enterprise? Starting with improving uh, the customer experience because the overall uh, process uh, for uh, serving the customer issues, uh, responding to their inquiries will be much faster when we are using RPA solutions either. Um, and also we can do some sort of integration with uh, between the chatbots and and the RPA to further automate the process of handling uh, the, um, the customer's inquiries. So this increase uh, the overall um, performance, decrease the required waiting time and improve the overall customer experience. Also, it improves the employee's experience because as was mentioned, it saves a lot of time of doing a very repetitive um, tasks and let uh, the custom, uh, let uh, the employees focus more on the higher value tasks and the objectives. And um, of course, all of this together will um, increase the overall efficiency of uh, the business processes, accelerate, accelerate uh, the operations and uh, decrease the overall uh, required time and the cost um, to do the operational tasks. And of course, this will uh, help to provide uh, more uh, value to uh, the business. And of course, also using RPA, as uh, mentioned, RPA is very standard and have a very low um, error rate. So it will uh, make sure that um, the procedures done by the RPA are compliant to all uh, the compliance and all the regulations, either on the enterprise level or on uh, the government level or, um, or any other required uh, laws. So what are um, what are the main um, RPA candidate pro uh, candidate processes? So uh, usually we give an example on the payroll uh, processing because we know payroll needs a lot of manual intervention month after month and year after year and all the steps that are doing that are done in the payroll are almost the same every month and um, and every year. So the RPA systems now can be used to extract all the details required from the handwritten timesheets, calculate the, the base for each employee, okay, and can integrate also work with, uh, integrate also with the bank systems to do the transactions. Another um, candidate process here is uh, the client information update. So we all know that updating the CRM is very um, painful task because usually uh, the client base is spread across many geographies. There are frequent calls to the back end databases and the updates and the changes are coming from all the resources all the time. So RPA now can process these requests in patches and instead of hand, uh, handling them one by one, this will reduce the overall um, load on the back end system and also ensure uh, better performance and data quality across uh, the overall um, business process and application. Renewal process also is um, is a little bit of headache for um, for many um, departments, irrespective of the industry. So because it include, it's not very complex due to um, the exception or the complication, but rather than due to the number of uh, operations and synchronizations that need to be done across different departments and system at the same time. So RPA robots now can take this all uh, process, starting with standardizing the communication with uh, the client, processing the required, changing, drafting the documents, and update the systems accordingly. Many other uh, many other processes also include uh, uh, compliance reporting because the more we have a wider enterprise that have lots of departments, the lot is, the more it's becoming complex to handle each um, 
request for compliance uh, or to handle each issue one by one. Now RPA can um, do this on behalf of the, um, the, com the compliance employees and it can do also uh, reporting to the authorities uh, to make sure that uh, the employees are complying to uh, the internal uh, procedures, uh, the audit requirements and so on. Um, also, the processes include uh, customer complaints and customer services support, as mentioned in the previous slide. OK, so. To be able to um, do this sort of um, automation to the process. Welcome to you. There are two kinds of uh, processes that can be automated. Uh, either something called attended processes, and in the attended uh, processes or the attended robots, the automated uh, the automation is done by um, cooperation between the RPA robot itself and the human. So there are there is some sort of need to uh, for the human intervention in this kind of processes. On the other hand, the unattended uh, robots or unattended processes, this uh, process Procedures can be totally uh, automated by the RPA solution and there is no need for the human intervention in this case. So uh, this uh, video will explain to us um, the difference between the attended and unattended robots and uh, how both of them help uh, to uh, do the automation. Welcome to UiPath Robots a key component of the UiPath Enterprise RPA platform. These digital workers execute the workflows you create in UiPath Studio. There are two types of robots. Attended robots help human workers speed front office tasks. Triggered by user commands or needing human direction, attended robots operate in the background while users work on higher level tasks. Unattended robots run back office tasks in a physical or virtual environment and can be scheduled to self-start. UiPath robots offer exclusive features and deliver the industry's best automation results. Centralized configuration lets you remotely configure and reschedule robots, enabling operational scalability across global business units. With floating robots, you can transfer an attended robot from one machine to another, ideal when the user is not assigned a dedicated machine. You can dynamically schedule your robots based on your unique business requirements scaling your robot workforce up in times of peak demand and down on slow days. With superior computer vision, robots precisely identify on-screen objects in less than 100 milliseconds, delivering the fastest, most accurate automation available. Data can be extracted from desktop applications and web screens with 100% accuracy. And UiPath's orchestrator centralized licensing, deployment, and monitoring lets you simply manage thousands of robots enterprise-wide. Finally, robots support a wide variety of automations, including Citrix, Microsoft Office, Web, Desktop, Enterprise App, Mainframe, Text, Data, Email, IT, and Lock Screen GDPR compliant configurations. As you consider RPA solutions, remember that UiPath robots are unique. These hero robots are innovative, intelligent, and designed for high performance. They offer unmatched computer vision, and can flexibly automate any legacy or cloud application. Get your business. OK, so in the previous uh, video, um, they were talking about uh, how RPA is now um, integrated with computer vision technologies, NLP technologies. So I want to move to the next part where we talk about how RPA is uh, integrating with the different artificial intelligence technologies and how this makes things different in the RPA. Actually, artificial intelligence uh, integrating RPA with artificial intelligence moved us from the regular automation to the intelligent automation, where robots now can handle more uh, complex tasks that usually uh, require that usually requires cognitive uh, decisions. So regular RPA uh, systems, as we mentioned, uh, used to do um, connecting to the system, APIs, extracting data, copying and pasting uh, data, opening emails and attachments, um, scrubbing data from the web. But with the AI capabilities added to this, now we can understand different types of documents. Either these documents are unstructured or semi-structured. 
also we can understand uh, the visual screens, including the virtual desktops. We can also uh, do some sort of uh, language understanding and integration between uh, the chatbots and the RPA solutions to automate um, to automate the overall process, starting from the customer or end user uh, facing, getting the inquiries from uh, the end user, handling this inquiries and doing the overall back end process. Uh, so now RPA and artificial intelligence work together to um, provide further automation and to make it more intelligent automation. The next video will explain on a specific small uh, use case in the banking sector how AI added value to the RPA industry. Hardworking Maria and Stefan are at that exciting and nerve-wracking stage in their life buying a new home. Their biggest obstacle? The 42 days they can expect it to take to secure their loan, which could mean losing out on their dream home. It's no wonder it takes that long. Banks receive over a million mortgage applications a year, with different types of documents coming in from all different places. Processing them requires hundreds of steps, costs billions, and slows down their revenue cycle. What to do? We need to match Maria and Stefan with the right bank, one that can get them sorted in no time. Enter Superior AI Bank. They're doing things differently. How? Not only is the bank automating time-consuming tasks and critical processes using robots, but they're also adding AI so their robots can handle more complex processes. How exactly does AI help the bank automate more and provide them with a competitive advantage? By enhancing their automations with AI, the bank can unleash their robots to do more, including the ability to enter Maria and Stefan's income, credit and other personal information using document understanding so no one has to do it manually. Decipher and process those thrilling documents like title deeds, thanks to natural language processing. Accurately convert and interpret handwritten home inspection notes. Utilize machine learning to analyze and predict whether the couple is likely to default on the loan. Allow the loan officers to check over and validate the robot's work for regulatory compliance. And with computer vision, the bank's automations can interact with every interface they encounter across the mortgage lifecycle, including loan origination systems. All of that makes a speedier and more efficient mortgage process, which can only mean good news for Maria and Stefan and their dream home. And should they ever have an application question, an AI-enabled chatbot is on hand to assist at any time and can provide updates on their application status. Looks like they're on track. Getting started on the journey to practical AI was easy for the bank, thanks to the starter models from UiPath. And these models are constantly learning and improving. What's more, AI is helping the bank to better understand its processes using their digital footprints, uncovering a constant flywheel of new automation opportunities. The match turned out perfectly. Superior AI Bank is constantly becoming more efficient, improving the speed of their revenue cycle and delivering a stellar customer experience. And Maria and Stefan were able to close on their loan in record time. Okay, continuing on uh, the discussion on the different uh, AI tasks that can uh, be added or integrated. Yeah, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, 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 yes, and I had a question. So if sure. I mixing the RPA and the AI with in a combine, uh -huh. uh, so the system the system can be uh, can be uh, can we do the decision making or how it will be? Yeah, so it can. When we add in the AI, so the machine can also can, so uh, it can make a decision, na? Yeah. Yes, yes, it can make a decision, but of course, um, not all the decisions can be automated uh, by uh, AI yet. Uh, based on the complexity of the decision, we can decide. There are some AI-ready models that can support uh, many decision-making um, functionalities okay but uh, this needs to be of course handled between uh, the technical team and the customer to understand how far they want uh, the complex process or the complex decision making to be handled but generally yes huge part of the decision making process can be done by um, ai with rpa now oh, oh thank you thank you okay so um 
continue the discussion on uh, the different uh, NLP tasks that can, um, NLP means the natural language processing, which is the subfield of artificial intelligence focusing on understanding uh, the meaning and the context of the text. So um, some of these tasks are used with the RPA solutions on the unstructured data, like classification, for example. So classification is used to identify the different types of documents based on previous trainings. Um, sample uh, example use cases include document classifications, um, loan classifications, insurance claim classification, product classification based on uh, product descriptions, and of course email classification as well. Another task that can be um, applied is uh, clustering, like uh, classification. Clustering is like classification, but we don't have a specific predefined classes previously. Uh, this can be used um, in a feature extraction and um, this is dependent on um, using um, on extracting the characteristics between the different elements to form different uh, groups. OK, so uh, the, sample, the example use cases include um, key concerns for customer um, emails, customer feedback analysis, social media analysis. Um, also, summarization is important task here uh, to provide a comprehension, um, a comprehensive description for uh, larger texts. This can be used in um, documents, uh, information retrieval and semantic search. And also we have here um, cognitive capture to uh, intelligent capture of information from uh, free text like uh, documents, emails, reports, scan forms, OCR and ICR and so on. Um, another example also on the artificial intelligence capabilities in uh, with uh, RPA is um, AI for fraud detection. And this solution actually can be part of RPA solution or as a standalone solution. This solution can help to detect the possibility of real-time fraud based on um, the suspicious activities like multiple accounts transferring money into a single account, um, accounts that have um, a low tension of money stay also um, sudden uh, rise of activity in uh, bank transfer uh, detect ought also help to detect potential individual or uh, corporate um, fraud uh, uh, fraud uh, behavior or money uh, laundry or other uh, suspicious behavior in uh, the banking industry so uh, this solution uses ai to identify the different uh, fraudulent uh, patterns uh, either through using uh, clustering techniques as I mentioned before be or uh, diff different uh, behavior patterns like we can see the chain uh, patterns, the star patterns and some other patterns to detect the potential of fraud and the flag this and after flagging this, this can uh, so based on the system requirements, either the transaction can be stopped immediately or this can be um, flagged for uh, a human um, a human for human intervention to uh, give them the ability to decide if it's really a fraudulent behavior of the, or this can be passed. So now we finished um, the talking about the general uh, concepts and different terms in um, RPA that or the terminology that usually associated with RPA and how RPA work with artificial intelligence. Let's talk more about the, the industrial uh, use cases. OK, so I will start with the banking sector as it's one of the sectors that benefits the most from the RPA technology. So RPA technology enables an increased automation scope with um, attended, unattended and hybrid robots. This can help to reduce uh, the compliance burdens, uh, deliver omnichannel customer communication and reduce the required costs. Some of the main uh, processes that can be automated in banking include uh, loan processing, uh, credit card issues, uh, fraud management and addiction, as mentioned, um, customer importing, uh, risk and compliance uh, operations and reporting, internal and external port, um, uh, reporting, customer services and um, requests, uh, request handling and re uh, payment reconciliation. Another sector also that benefit from uh, the 
RPA is uh, the telecommunication sector. So um, R the RPA and telco have a very huge value, can uh, very huge value, and the candidate processes include improving the customer experience through using attended robots, uh, automating the document uh, processing with RPA to provide, um, to help provide end-to-end -end, uh, billing and invoicing, also improving uh, the services insurance uh, through the unattended automation, and also RPA with artificial intelligence can help the network planning teams to answer specific questions about the environment and to provide next best actions. This will help, uh, this will result into um, enabling the network teams to find faults faster, maintain the quality. Also, the collected data can be used for further analysis like uh, revenue forecasting, network planning, and also this helps the operations team to manage and alerts to improve the overall accuracy and the quality. Uh, the next sector uh, here is um, the governmental uh, agencies and um, there are also a wide range of um, processes or benefits uh, from uh, the RPA in the governmental agencies, starting with enabling a better customer services uh, as we mentioned, to and eliminating the calls to contact the customer centers about specific errors or uh, services. Also, uh, offering uh, improvements in the operational processes such as better quality, um, improved turnaround times, increased uh, standardization. Uh, also, eliminating the need for manual data and is a very headache process and um, increasing the order fulfillment rate uh, and of course all of this will help the employees to, for, to focus more on as uh, a higher value uh, work um, um, directly benefits their missions. This Overall automation, um, uh, this overall automation will result in 60 percent the processing times also 100% accuracy with no um, uh, with no error rate and increase increase the overall throughput time by 30 times for uh, manufacturing um, rpa now help manufacturers to uh, automate back office uh, processes and identify and improve the deficiencies with their uh, with these operations by automating emails procurement processes digitization of paperwork this will help them to get better inventory control and ensure optimum level of skills uh, of skills among the employees uh, one of the success stories in uh, the global man uh, in the manufacturing area is a global manufacturing company where uh, the customer was looking for an automation solution that can replace the manual process for vendor management. The process involved uh, vendor creation, check block extension, uh, duplicate checks for 28 uh, countries and non-European countries, VAT validation, IPAN validations and many other validations also for USA and other countries. With RPA, the company managed to automate the entire validation uh, process with uh, the robots uh, automatically extracting information from the services, the web forms and validating uh, the VAT, the IPAN, all the required validation, validations in all country. This provides 100% reduction in rework time and manual errors. Next use case I want to talk about is email analytics use case where the, cha the challenge is that the customer received around 10,000 emails per day, which included 1,000 emails related to fund transfer for further processing. So the RPA helped to automatically do all the information retrieval process even from nested emails and identify all the tasks to be performed. Next use case I want to talk about is logistics and transportation use case provided by our vendor Datamatics. Welcome to Datamatics. This video highlights how robotic process automation helps businesses automate rule-based, repetitive and tedious processes. 
let's show you an example of how a transportation and logistics company has reaped benefits through RPA. On a daily basis, the company receives approximately 300 to 400 Excel files on email from multiple vendors for processing fuel consumption payment. It manually processes each file, which is a time-consuming and error-prone activity that impacts speed and hinders scalability. TrueBot Datamatics RPA solution has helped the company cut down processing time by 80% and at the same time ensure 100% accuracy. Let us see how. All the incoming emails with attachments are received in a dedicated email box on the designated computer. On clicking the email download button, the application segregates the emails as accepted and rejected. The emails are rejected in case the attachments are password protected or they don't have the required columns and data. They also fall in the rejected category if they have valid Excel data but is not intended for the said company or if the emails have no attachment. For each rejection, TrueBot sends an email reply to the supplier through a predefined format mentioning the reason for rejection. For each accepted and rejected email, the application downloads the attachment in accepted and rejected folders respectively with the suffix of current date and time. Now on clicking the validation button, the application reads each Excel file from the accepted folder and checks availability of the required data or fields in the file. If all the columns are available and if there is no data missing within the columns, it is considered as accepted and validated. It is important to note that TrueBot can handle multiple complex file formats and does not even need a template or fixed format. Further, TrueBot converts the validated data into a standard file format and saves it into the successfully processed folder with the current date and time. Files that are not valid and do not contain the required fields are moved into the exception folder and treated as a separate workflow. It is used to upload the data into the enterprise's fuel upload log system for further processing. Now on clicking the prod upload button, the application opens the URL of the enterprise's fuel upload log system in Internet Explorer. It then populates the data from all formatted files hosted in the successfully processed folder into the enterprise system for further payment processing. With Datamatics TrueBot, the process owner can effortlessly achieve this two-way communication between two systems, that is, the enterprise system and Excel files. Here, TrueBot reduces the cycle time by 86%. Similar results can be achieved in many other repetitive processes across different... Okay, so now we came to uh, the end of the use cases we want to discuss today. Um, there are a lot, a lot of more use cases in the RPA area, some of the same industries we mentioned, some in other industries as well. So there are lots of new things that can be done uh, with RPA providing more intelligent automation. So now I want to move to a new concept which is called hyper automation. Let's see what it is this. Hyper automation RPA is combined with other disruptive technologies to be able to provide end to end automation solutions. These disruptive technologies include artificial intelligence to start with. As we already mentioned, many subfields of artificial intelligence are contributing in the development of the RPA solutions like the natural language processing, computer vision, intelligent, op uh, intelligent OCR, uh, machine learning as well. Also, we have a process understanding to be able to look deeply into how the team works to be able to identify which processes are much better candidates for uh, the automation than advanced analytics to be able to measure and demonstrate the ROI of automation and identify if this is suitable uh, for uh, the current 
um, company objectives and the current uh, business outcomes or not. And finally, workforce engagement capability to enable everyone in the organization to contribute in the automation life cycle, not just the RPA developers, but also involve the subject matter experts, the business analysts and the business users. One of the examples in uh, the hyper automation area is um, UiPath RPA platform. UiPath now provide a complete end to end automation life cycle with multiple stages, starting with the discovery stage where we identify and discover the candidate RPA uh, processes and the candidate processes for automation and use artificial intelligence here also to help in the discovery phase. Uh, we have uh, some tools here, including task capture, process mining, task mining, and all of these tools help to identify the candidate processes either on the desktop level and uh, the employee level or on the organization level. Second phase we have here is the build phase where we uh, convert the ideas uh, we collected in the first uh, stage into actual RPA could and do all the required uh, integration with um, other systems as well. And here we use um, RPE Studio and also document understanding that help to extract the required information from all different files format. Next phase is the manage phase where we manage uh, the deployment, where we, ma where we manage uh, the deployment of uh, the RPA automation and optimize the automation using the RPA tool, uh, the UiPath tool that is called the orchestrator and also a couple of other tools that help to optimize uh, the performance like uh, the test manager to, uh, tool to um, help test the RPA solutions either as separate solutions or as part of complete enterprise solutions. Also in this phase, we have AI fabric tool and this tool help to use artificial intelligence in further cognitive tasks, either through building um, new AI models or using ready and custom AI models. In the run phase, we start actually to run all the codes developed in as a build phase and tested in as a managed phase, either through the attended robots or the, through the unattended robots. And meanwhile, we can start engaging people um, in the process uh, to co and uh, collaborate uh, between them, either engaging the employees in the attended robots or engage with end users in attended or unattended robots to get their input and to get the feedback. And finally, we have the measure phase where we can measure uh, the, um, all the automation life cycle to make sure that the RPA solution align with the business outcomes and the organization vision. With this slide, we came to the end of uh, the presentation. Hope it was beneficial for all of you and thanks for uh, your time today. Have a good day.